to encourage myself, to encourage myself. And that is very powerful. But David said that out of a place of really knowing that God is sovereign and that God has all power in his hands, all power in his hands. And in the way I believe that we can stay encouraged, that we can stay up, is that we must have a consistent prayer life. We as Christian believers are required to pray. We as Christian believers are required to pray. We must pray. You cannot stop praying. And so I want to talk about uh, the, the effectual prayer, the prayer that gets good results, the, the, the effective, favorable prayer. I want to go into the details about that. I want to look at what it takes in order for us to get the results that we believe or we're trusting. Anytime you pray, you're, you're seeking God for an answer. You're seeking God for a resolve. And so I'm interested in how can I be effective? And I'm praying that you are interested in how can you be effective and get the favorable answer to your prayers. Uh, but you got to remember, prayer is a conversation with God that is ongoing. It's a conversation with God that should never, ever end. Let us, let us pray uh, and, and, and then let us trust God for the word. And, and I pray this, I pray that you are listening, that you're paying attention, that you're focused, because I believe that God has a word for this season, for this hour, for this moment. And if we can receive this word, we'll be blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we humble ourselves. We, we thank you, Father, for you. You are our God. You are our Father. You take care of us. You love us. And Father God, we just humble ourselves. Father God, we know that we need you. We come with a heart of thanksgiving and a heart of praise. We come, Father God, humbled. We come asking that you forgive us for our sins and our trespasses. Father God, and then we trust that you have and we don't walk in guilt. We don't walk in shame, Father God, because you said in your word that we are forgiven in Christ Jesus. And then you said that we will confess, Father God, you're faithful to forgive and cleanse us. So we trust that. And Father God, wherever there's heaviness, we ask that you will lift it. Wherever there's fear, Father God, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. For we know that you have not given us a spirit of fear. Wherever, Father God, we feel like we're running out of time and things should be different, Father God, give us patience. Let us wait upon the Lord so that we can see you, so that we won't faint, Father. And we bless you and we glorify you. We worship you. We praise you. Now, Father God, it's time for your word to go forth. Therefore, I decrease and pray that you might increase. Allow it to be all of you and none of me. Father God, touch every ear that it might hear. Touch every eye that it might see. And touch every heart that it might receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I said to you initially that we, we, we as believers in Christ are, are required to pray. In order to, to maintain and be who we say we are, in order to be children of God and represent God in the earth, we are required to pray to God. To pray. It's a difference. Sometimes we're praying, but we're not necessarily, it's an, it's a, we are required to pray to God. Jesus said over in Luke chapter, chapter 18, verse 1, that men are always to pray, always to pray. When we, and then it goes, the scripture goes on and says, and, and to not faint. When we really pray, it takes away the, the opportunity to faint, the opportunity. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, we need to pray without ceasing. Praying without ceasing is an ongoing conversation. Where God, now hear this, and, and you'll hear me say this again. God needs to be the one that's doing the most talking. <laughs> God, listen, listen, brothers and sisters. When, when, when God say pray without ceasing, there needs to be, if you, when you pray without ceasing, you open up the lines of communication, and you're, you're interacting with God, through praising him and glorifying him and magnifying him and thanking him and acknowledging who he is, then you, you, you really leave the lines of communication open and you do not stop praying. But the key to effective prayer is hearing, hearing God. Uh, in verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, pray without ceasing. And then in everything, because because you're connected to God and the lines of communication are open, you can, we can afford to pray. We can afford to give God thanks for, for, for what he's doing. Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 
Thanksgiving. Let me let me say this to you. Let me break in because I really want to give this to you that I've that I've gotten. I don't want to take all of your time up this evening. Let me share this with you. A thankful heart can get greater results from God. A thankful heart can get greater result, results from God. Uh, but this is the thing. If let's say if you're not if you're not feeling well, or things are not going where you're worried, and you say, well, you know, God, I really want you to take this word ration. I want you to take this word ration. And you begin to give him thanks for it and begin to give him appreciation for it. And then it's gone. A lot of times we forget that, you know, we prayed and God took that oration away. He took that fear away. He took, he, he changed those circumstances and we don't give him, we don't give him praise. So we're right back in the same predicament. When you give God thanks for what he does, then you come out of your situations quicker. You come out of your situation. So as believers, we must give God thanks. We, we, we the Christian believers, we desire to pray Prayers which get effective, favorable results. That's our desire. We did, when we pray, we desire to pray prayers which get effective, favorable results. That's what I want to share with you. But James said this, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail. The word avail means breakthrough. It gets results. It gets there. Uh, the righteous man is the one who trusts God in Christ Jesus according to God's revealed truths. The righteous man. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. What, what makes us right, righteous is not our deeds and our actions. We cannot fulfill that standard of right. What makes us righteousness is our trust in Christ, our confidence in Jesus Christ. And then when, when we have full confidence in Christ Jesus and we're committed to God, then it, we, we, can, we, can, we can see God's blessings because what he does is he's allowed to reveal the truth to us. Now, prayers, get this. Prayers which get favorable, result, favorable results are prayers which seek and submit to God's will. Seek, when, when you're praying, you want to grab hold of God's concerns. You want to grab hold of the burdens of God. You want to grab hold of the challenges of God. You want to, you want to grab whatever God's mind. A lot of times it's easy to get down and we, you, know, you start praying about, you know, you need God to take care of your home and pay your bills. And, but, but this is the key to all of that being done. Seek God for what he's concerned about. Seek God for what he's concerned about. Now, those are the prayers that's going to get. The key to getting the results needed and sought after is submitting to the perfect and absolute will of God. Hear that again. The key to getting the results needed and sought after is submitting to the perfect and absolute will of God, the perfect and absolute will of God. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become followers of Jesus Christ. We are to imitate Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus did was about doing God's will, about your, your life can turn around when you start praying, seeking God's will. And so as believers, we are obligated, we're obligated to do as Christ has done. We're obligated, as believers, we're obligated, get this, we're obligated, we've obligated ourselves, God has obligated us, because you got to think about really nobody's saved on their own. The only reason, the only way we saved is that, that Jesus Christ, he, he pulls us in, God draws us to Christ. I mean, he, they do all, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit do all the work and all we have to do is just submit and, and get it and, and learn and submit ourselves to it. So as, as Christian believers, what we've obligated ourselves to do, we've obligated ourselves to imitate Jesus Christ. We're obligated, we've obligated ourselves. So to imitate Jesus Christ, we must have a life without, without ceasing. Now, 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 I mean a prayer life without ceasing. We must have a prayer life in order to imitate Jesus Christ, to, to follow Christ, to be to be, to be effective in the kingdom of God, to be the children of God, we must have a prayer life without ceasing. A prayer life without, Jesus had a prayer life, but he was, it was always about doing God's will. So I'm saying to you, the key to getting results need, needed and sought after is submitting to the perfect and absolute will of God. God doesn't have a permissive will. People say, well, you know, I, I know I'm in God's, no, no, either it's your will or it's God's will. Either it's my will or it's God's will. There's, there's no in between. We can say, you know, God is absolute. God is straightforward. God is all God. He's solid. So he doesn't have a permissive. He has a, he has a perfect will. And so either we can get in his perfect will or either we're not in his perfect will, but there's no. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, 
We become followers of Jesus Christ. We become, we become followers of Jesus Christ. We are to imitate Jesus. Everything Jesus was doing was to fulfill God's will. I, I said that because I want you, I said it again because I want you to hear it again. Now, the way to imitate Jesus, this is effective. This is about being uh, having effective, favorable prayers. To, the way to imitate Jesus is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Do you know that when Jesus prayed for folk, they were healed? When Jesus uh, uh, wanted food for folk to be fed, he, they, he fed them. Jesus didn't have a prayer. Uh, he, was, he, he was very effective in the earth. We as believers need to be effective in the earth uh, for the kingdom of God. Now, the Holy Spirit, now I just said to you, the way to imitate Jesus is to, is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is God. And what he does is he manifests the mind and the will of Jesus Christ within the believer. The Holy Spirit manifests the mind and the will of Jesus Christ within the believer. Okay? That no, no other way can it be really manifest. You can study the Bible. You can study the Bible. But, but if, if God don't give you a revelation of it, he don't give you an understanding of it, it, it can't take. The Spirit of God must be inside of us for us to get good understanding of the Scriptures. And uh, so, so uh, our will, our will uh, need to be submitted to God. It must be submitted to his will so we, can, so we can get the best results in prayer. Now, prayer, I said this earlier, but prayer is a conversation with God. Now, now remember this part. Real good prayer is where you are hearing God. You're hearing God because God knows the answer. We, you go to, we go to God for answers. We go to God, like even during this challenging time, this time is not bad for everybody. This time is a blessing for some people. They're able to take advantage of the opportunities that's been afforded them. So, so that's what I want everybody to, God wants us all to be able to do as believers. But we need a consistent prayer life and, and this prayer life, needs to, we need to understand what we're doing. Uh, now, remember I said this to you, God should be heard in prayer. All the talking and asking, do you know God already know what you need? God, God, he, he already knows what we need. He knows. He, so when we, when we approach God, we need to be respectful and we need to be praying to God and asking God uh, just to, just to, we, we are here just to glorify, just to magnify, just to praise, because we already know that you know what we need. You, you, we don't really, we don't really know what we need when we approach God, because what God has for us is greater, is greater than what we can ask or think. So prayer is a conversation with God. Prayer, God, God, God should be, be heard in prayer because God knows the answers. If, if, if one does not know what God said when they finish in prayer, they did not pray. Hear, hear that. A lot of times people get down and they'll have these long, long prayers, long words, all these words, and, and, and it's just redundant. It's, it doesn't mean anything. Jesus even said that. He said they think they'll be heard by all their words, but no. Listen, this is, I'm trying to help you. I'm blessing you right now. God is helping all of us, as a matter of fact. This is what I'm th I want you to think about. When I get off my knees or when I get off my face, what did God say? What did God say? I always put that question before you. What did God say? Put your focus, your mind, your energy on what God has said to you, and you'll see the effects of those prayers. You'll see favorable effects. What did God say? What did, like you can, you don't, you know, you can get down on your knees and be all upset and say, say, God, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. God, I want you to deal with this person that way. I want you to do. But let me say something to you, brothers and sisters. And I want you to hear me in love. The best way to pray, the best, absolute best, best thing you should do in prayer is listen. I, I keep saying it because it's important. You know, prayer is not about us getting down and giving God our, you know, our Christmas list, our, God, I want you to buy me this. God, I want this. I want no. God already has a plan for all of that. You, we need the instructions, the wisdom of God, in order to experience the blessings of God. We need God's voice in our ear canal. We need to hear the master. We need to because He already knows, and we need to open up our hearts, hearts to do that. Now, so so let me do this again. Prayer is a, is a conversation with God. God God should be heard in prayer because God knows the answers. If, if one does not know what God said when they finished praying, they did not earnestly pray. They missed prayer. Now, we are seeking God. When you pray, you're seeking God for his will to manifest in our lives. Prayer is about being willing to abandon and, and look, abandon and walk away from 
Whatever I think or feel is best for me because I must respect and honor God and realize when I go to talk to God that he knows what's best for me. God knows what's, like this is important. God knows what's best for me. God knows what's best. So when I, this is, I want to, I want to get this deep inside of you now. God knows what's best. God knows what's best for me. God, I mean, <laughs> listen, God knows what's best for me. Say it. God knows what's best for me. Keep saying it. Say, God knows what's best for me. It's going to change your life. It's going to, when, if your life, if your prayer life can line up with God's order, his divine order, that's the change in our lives. A lot of times people are praying and it's like, you know, I don't even know why I'm praying. I don't see no difference in my life. Well, you, you're not listening. <laughs> that's not, like you got to listen. You got to, we have to listen to God. God, God can talk. <laughs> you think God don't need to hear us. God created us. I mean, he don't need to hear us. God can talk. So let me give you this again. We are seeking God for his will to manifest in our lives. Prayer is about being willing to abandon and walk away from what I think or feel is best for what God knows is best. Now, Jesus is a prime example. He, he exemplified that in the Garden of Gethsemane over in Mark chapter 14, verse 35. The Bible says this. Now, get this. Jesus, of course, doing this, he was, he was getting ready to go to the cross and he was having some difficult moments. And, and, uh, and he looked at, and I believe he looked at, I mean, a lot of theologians say different things. And that's, that's you know, the interpretation is what God gives you. And the revelation is what God gives you. But I believe that Jesus looked, when he talked about the cup, he looked at the sin of the world. And, 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 and it would, it would, he realized suddenly that this is going to separate me from, you know, from the Father. That's why he got on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why is God forsaken me? So in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, was, he said that he was troubled. See, when you have trouble, you need to have a prayer life. When you're moving in the direction God has ordained you to do, when you're trying to do anything meaningful, when you're trying to do anything decent, when you're trying to do anything worthwhile, when you're called to a purpose, brothers and sisters, you must have a prayer life. You must have a prayer life. The prayer life need to be where if you get in a tough area and you just got a little bit further to go, that God can push you through by the Holy Spirit. That you won't quit, that you won't give up. A prayer life allows you to stay in there and hang in there and not faint. But it's got to be listening and hearing God. So in Mark chapter 15, verse 35, it says, and he went forward a little. And fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, get this, and this is Jesus, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Get this now. Now, he understood his call, and a lot of times we do, but life can be hard. Life can be challenging. It's, it's based on how caught up in it, how far in it. Let's say if you're, over the, if you're the head of a household. You got, you know, you got a family, you got responsibility. Life can be challenging. If you over, if you, if you, if you work on a job and you, life can be challenging. If you're trying to make provisions and help people, if you're in ministry, whatever you're doing, life can be, Jesus was at a challenging place. I mean, he was, I mean, Jesus was at a challenge. He said, Father, look, this is what he said, look. He said, look, he said, he said, I'll be Father. That's very humbling. It's very humbling. He said, all things are possible unto you. Get this now. Now, might be mindful. A lot of times we'll pray and ask God to get us in a certain place, to bless us, to get us moving. And then when we get to that hard part where we got to press our way through, where we got to press our way through, it can be very challenging. We, you know, God will tell you to love your enemies and just about, you got to love one more. Just got to love them a little longer. And, and you're trying to never do something just as crazy. And you'll be like, oh God, you need Jesus. You need a prayer life. You need for God to be talking in you. You're forgiven. Walk away. Don't talk to him. Don't react. Don't interact. You know, we need the Lord. So prayer life allows us to keep, keep, in touch with God and God to keep in touch with us. So he said this. This is what he said. All things are possible unto you, Father. Take away this cup from me. Then he said this. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. See, you have to be open when you pray that God's will will manifest. This, is, this will change your life if you can hear this, brothers and sisters. It'll get you out of the frustration of prayer. It'll, get, it'll make prayer real for you. It'll make prayer real for you. You got to be open enough to let God tell you what's going on. A lot of times we're so desperate. You know, my, my bills are due now. God, I got these deadlines. Listen, brothers and sisters, God knew that. He'd been known. But this is the only way he can get you to pray and listen to him. So he's not going to talk to you about your bills. He's going to talk to you about having a better life where your bills won't be an issue, issue anymore. So prayer is an intimacy with God 
to feel God out. Get this now for what is best for our lives. We have to. We have the, the intimacy is to feel God out. You have to. You have to be willing to feel God, like like get in and spend the time, the quiet time, and and stay with God for a season, and and let Him know how much you love Him and you bless Him and you let Him minister to you. Let God minister. God can minister to you, brothers and sisters. He can. He can impart something in you that you can't get no other way other than being intimate with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can. That's what. That's the life changer. That's where you come out of hard things and difficult things. And that there's an intimacy with God. It ain't about talking so much. It's about glorifying Him and worshiping Him and praising Him and and then being quiet. Being quiet, just loving, just laying in His lap, and then let Him drop some stuff in you. Drop, drop some, drop some stuff. Drop some wisdom. Drop some peace. Drop some love. Drop some joy in you. That's, that's intimacy with God, brothers and sisters. It's, it's real. So if Jesus had to do it, we have to do it. Prayer is an intimacy with God to feel God out for what is best for our lives based on his call and his purpose. See, everybody, my, everybody, have, God, is, he didn't save you for nothing. He, he didn't set you free. He didn't, he didn't draw you to Christ for nothing. He, has, he had a reason. He's got a purpose for it. And the, and the best joy in the world, brothers and sisters, is to get right in the middle of that purpose. I didn't say it was easy. Jesus was going to the cross to be nailed, brothers and sisters. He was going to the cross. He was headed to be beat. I didn't say it was easy, but I said it's the best. It's the most joy. It brings you the most peace. It's the, it's, it's, it's the most fulfilling. And, 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 and the way we can get right in the middle of his will, brothers and sisters, is that we can pray. Open, open prayer. Open, submit it. Not a prayer where you're talking about, God, I'm going to do this. God, I'm, I'm this. I got this title. No, 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 no. God, what do you want to do? Master, have your way. I'm just submitting. I'm just, God, just have your way with me. Mean it. <laughs> mean it. I want to give you John 5 and 30. 5 and 30. John, John, St. John chapter 5 verse 30 says this. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can, I'm sorry. I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. I do not seek my own will but the will of him who sent me. John chapter six, verse 38, Jesus said, I have come not to do my own will. See, you're not saved to do your own will. You know, a lot of things don't make sense to you. That, that's a, when, when life don't make sense to you and it stops you, that means that you are an immature saint. We, you, you know, and it's okay, we, we have immaturity, but we have to keep growing. We're always growing, brothers and sisters. Well, don't be discouraged cause you, cause you, because of that. But, but Jesus said, I came, I came to do God's will. I came, he said, I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So when God saved us and, and, and bring us into Christ Jesus, he didn't do it just for the fun of it. He, he did it with a purpose in mind. The purpose is to, to be a part of his kingdom, work in his vineyard, see the souls one into the kingdom of God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Now, now John chapter 4, verse 34 says, uh, Jesus said unto them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Now, now these scriptures are being read because, see, Jesus' mind stayed on God. If you want a breakthrough in your life, if you want effectual prayer, keep your mind on God. Psalms chapter chapter 143 and verse 10 says, teach me to do your will for you, for you are my God. Teach me to do your will for you. I mean, now we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of us teaching us as we yield to him. He's bringing forth the will of God because man cannot really do the will of God without God. I mean, that's the bottom line. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. That David wrote that. Now, Romans chapter 9, verse 16 says, So then, it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs. Your strength, can't, when you really have a prayer like God is your strength. But on God, who, who has mercy. James, I want, I want to go to this. James chapter chapter 4. A lot of times we have we make a lot of plans and we we have you know we have plans and we say okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that but look look what James had to, James had to say about that we need to check with God before we do anything we check, we need to check with God before we do everything if it's not even good say God you know I got a little urge huh? <laughs> I got a little urge I got a little desire here God I need you to have. and now sometimes God will give you a little something something listen as long as you don't do too much of it. I think we, listen, some of us are so religious, we ain't, I mean, God gonna say, you know what? I never meant for you to have, have such misery. <laughs> you ain't, ha you wasn't happy down there or nothing. 
I wanted you just to live and enjoy the things I blessed you with and have life and really be happy. But you was just so busy trying to be me that you, that you messed yourself up. God don't need us to be him. So every now and then he'll give you a little treat, you know. Now, James chapter 4 verse 13 says this. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or, or that city, spend a year there, carry on business or, and make money. We've learned through this, through this uh, virus that we, hey, it ain't so, we ain't so all in control like we thought. Verse 14 says, why, why, why you do not even know what will, will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You, you, you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanish. Instead, we ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, if it's God's will, but that's, that's what I want you to say from this day. If it be God's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and don't do it, it's a sin to them. So he's saying, look, let's, let's, let's keep a good, good open prayer life with God. And then let's always check with God to see what we need to do, what we're supposed to be doing. Let's always check with God to find out, God, what, you know, what, am I, what, are, what, is, what are your plans for me today? What are your plans for me today? This is what I'm going to leave you with, brothers and sisters. I, I, want, I want us to look at the prayer that Jesus gave. The disciples that said to Jesus, teach us to pray. And, and, and in this prayer, it's, it's very powerful. I want to just take a quick look at it over in Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to go from verse 9 to verse 13. Verse 9, I want to give you this. And I want you to be blessed with this. And, 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 and it's a good prayer to pray, but it's not a good prayer to pray quick. Listen to what you're saying when you're talking to God. When you're, when you're, this is what Jesus said. He said, after this manner, therefore pray you, our Father, our Father. And, and what, he, what he's done, he kicked us right out of selfishness, selfishness. It ain't your Father. It ain't my Father by myself. It's our Father. And, and, and we have to realize that he is our Father. It's a very powerful prayer if you can listen. So think about it. Like it, it allows you to really open up and humble yourself and submit. Our Father. Then he says, which art in heaven. That's respect. That's honor. That when you say you're in heaven, then you know that, that there's nothing blinding to God. God see everything, He know everything, and there's nothing that we can hide from. So it's respecting God. When you when you approach God, when we approach God in prayer, brothers and sisters, we need to respect and honor our Father. Our Father. Call him Father. Jesus said, Abba, Father. That's very humble. Abba, Father, my only Father. Abba, Holy Father. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven. He said, Hallow be thy name. The word hallow is that God's name is separate from any other name. God's name is a holy name. It's, it's a, so you go in respecting God, respecting, humble yourself and respect God. Then you know you're moving your way into the holiness of holies. Now you get into a place where, where you can hear from God. You can hear. God can talk to you. you the spirit is coming down and, you, and, you, and, you, and you're submitting yourself. And then now God can minister to you and bless you and give you Give you what he wants you to have. He says, thy kingdom come. Now you, you want to submit thy kingdom. What is, what is his kingdom? You want God to govern your life. You want God not only to govern your life, but everything that's going on around you in your life, pertaining to you and your family and everybody. You want God to be governing it. Let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. That's, that's key to it. That's the key to prayer. It's always about God. Like some things we don't understand. You know, you could be praying and asking God for favor or doing something in your life. You don't understand why it don't go like you think it ought to go. But listen to me, brothers and sisters. It wasn't God's will. If you prayed to God first now, now if you didn't pray to God, now, now if you didn't pray to God first, then God has nothing to do with it. He has nothing to do with it. A lot of times we blame things on God and God has nothing to do with it. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. So you're asking for the, you're asking God, we're agents in the earth calling down the will of God in the earth. We're agents in the earth calling down the will of God in the earth. Give us this day our daily bread. That's continuous. Continuous. God, you know, in our daily bread ain't this, it's not just food. Our, bread, our daily bread could be kindness. It could be peace. It could be joy. It could be respecting others. It could be praying for others. It could be forgiveness. Our daily bread, everything about God is spiritual. You remember when the people got hungry and God gave them manna from heaven, manna to eat. They didn't know what that was. The word manna means what is this anyway. But what, what, sometimes when God gives you what he gives you, you be praying for one thing. And what God gives you, you don't really know what it is that he's giving you. But whatever he gives you, if you're in the right place and you receive it, it's what you're supposed to have in order to do what God has ordained you to do. But that's what the willingness to abandon whatever you had in place before you ask God to help you. So he says, he says, thy will be done in earth. Give us this thy daily bread. Now, this is good. Forgive us 
our debts. This is this is what we've accumulated and hurt people and done things. We have any business and 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 you know and, and sometimes we instigate stuff and, and, and we swear somebody hurt us. <laughs> but but he said, forgive us for we pile up debts every day, brothers and sisters, in our thought patterns and our negativity. And so so we're asking God to wipe out the debt. Have mercy, God, on me. Get all of this off my slate. Let me move forward. But he said, as we forgive others. <laughs> so if you ain't willing to forgive other people, then you leave unforgiveness in your life. You leave unforgiveness. I won't say you tie the hands of God because God's hands can't be tied. <laughs> but what you do is you distance yourself from what he's provided. That's what happens. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's a part that you, I have to pray every day because it's so, it's so much stuff. So you're thinking the, the, the deep stuff. No, no, no. No, evil is anything that's not in agreement with God. In thought patterns, in ways, in their interaction. So won't God deliver us from evil? Temptation is any challenge that's calling, calling you to go where God really, uh, to go a place where, where it's going to cause you to be delayed in your, in your walk with God. See, when you're walking with God, God has a plan for your life. So you don't want to be delayed getting to whatever God has for you. And then he goes on, he's, he's ending it. He says, for thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Those are very powerful words. He said, God, you are the kingdom. So that means I'm not bowing to anybody else. You're the power. You're the glory. I'm not giving your glory to anybody else. I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody else because you are God and you're on my side and I'm on your side. We got a relationship and you got me. I love you. And so then it goes on and says forever. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, we must pray. We must pray consistently. We must pray continually. But remember this. This is the key to this whole message tonight. See God's will. See God's will. That's where your difference is. Be willing to abandon your own will. Be willing to forsake everything you think you know and see God's will. Listen, it's important. It's important to know God, though. It's important to know Jesus as Lord because you can't see God's will, not for real. A lot of times we make up all these religions and everybody talking to God all the time, God talking to them. I don't know what they experienced in, but I know you cannot know God for real without Jesus because the Bible said, Jesus said it. He said, you don't even know God without me and you can't know me without the Father. He said, you can't even come to me unless the Father draw you. I'm praying God is drawing somebody right now because, because you need a good prayer life that will work. And, and then he says, you, you know, I, and then I'll take you back to the Father. Now, this is, if God is drawing you, this is the prayer you need to pray, Father, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, I really need you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Then believe it. Believe that he come in. Then remember what you want to do now is you want to grow spiritually. You want God to baptize in the Holy Spirit. And you want to release your life over to Jesus. Release your life over to Jesus. And then, and then acknowledge that, that with your mouth, say, you know what, Jesus, thank you for being my Lord. Father God, thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit. And then you need to be baptized. You need to find, then you need a good church home. You need a place where you can grow spiritually. A place where you can grow spiritually. That's important. You know, brothers and sisters, listen. I love you. I thank God for you. But this is a time as well where we give. The giving is just as important as our, every, every other part of the service. Because it blesses me. The reason I always try to get these things that are key in, the salvation and, and the giving and the, and the work, that's what's blessed my life and brought me out of a, out of a difficult and challenging place, brothers and sisters. You know, I learned some key things. I learned that, that that prayer is critical, that confession is critical. And accepting Jesus Christ as Lord made a difference in my life. And then I learned that giving to God, the work of God, to the kingdom of God, it, it blessed my finances. It changed my financial situation. And it'll change yours, too, if you trust God. Now, listen, to you that are giving, I want to I want to pray over your gifts, but I want you to be a tither. The Bible said the tithe belongs to God. They're holy. Question, the question was asked, will a man rob God? Well, what does he mean by that? You're robbing God when you take the tithe and use them for whatever you want to. But then you're blessing, you're being obedient to God, and you're, you're allowing God in your finances because when you give God the 10%, which is the tithe, and you need to give him an offering too, then you're trusting God to take care of the 90%. And what it means, it don't mean that you'll be in and just all oh, have all this money. You have to grow in the money. You have to grow in the grace. You have to grow in grace as you walk with God. But when you give your tithe, God promised to sustain you and keep you. And he can do that. God is able. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven, pull you out a blessing that won't be enough room to re receive. Listen, brothers and sisters, be obedient to God. 
Don't, don't, don't play games. Well, I'm not going to give my time. Do God understand that? I want to hear the word. I want to, I want the pastor to pray for me, but I ain't going to. No, it don't work that way. You got to be obedient. It's, it's a whole, it's a whole Bible that we got to follow and submit to. Be faithful to God. Listen, be encouraged during this time, brothers and sisters, and, and trust God. And, and listen, let your prayer life work by listening to God. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll, we'll be back here again on Sunday because I still don't have all my stuff back yet, so I'm going to have to wait a while. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. I love you and I thank God for you. Did you stop it? How long ago did you stop it? Just a second ago. That's good.